Hello, this is uh, Roy Canterbury here. I'm going to be your host on uh, Archery Talk today. And what we're going to talk about today is uh, what you need to know um, buying your first bow. Uh, make sure you get the right one, things that you need to know, things that uh, uh, you need to watch out for so that uh, you get your first one and you, you know you're getting what you really want and what you need. Uh, one of the first things that uh, I would talk about is uh, um, why do you want to get into archery? Is it one of those where you watched 100 games and you thought shooting a bow was cool and wanted to try it? Is it something that you did when you were a kid and you wanted to pick it up again? Uh, there's all kinds of reasons. Uh, you know, maybe you watched Olympics and, this, and that inspired you. Uh, or you just uh, wanted to do some shooting when it's something a little different. And, and then you just kind of figure out, you know, what your why is. Uh, there's no wrong answer, uh, so think about what what it is that you want to do. What do you get out of it? Uh, what what do you want to get out of it? Um, I'm talking faster than what I can. Uh, my thinking and talking doesn't doesn't always match sometimes, but uh, uh, yeah, that's the that's the first thing one knows why you want to pick up archery. Uh, it could just be because you got some friends that that are doing it, and uh, you'd like to do it with them. It, it, there's all kinds of reasons why you want to do it. And that's a personal one, uh, what you want to do. But that leads you into uh, the next question is what type of archery do you want to do? Uh, you have uh, recurves, long bows, compound bows, crossbows, uh, all kinds of different uh, options you have in, in the archery field. Uh, pretty much I consider archery time you take a, a stick and fling it with a string. A, I kind of call that archery. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of them that use the compound bows. I do my hunting with a compound bow. Uh, I do have a recurve. I shoot it completely different. It's a different uh, a type of a, equipment. Uh, when I use my uh, a compound, I'm looking for sights and and everything else. Uh, when I shoot uh, uh, the re my recurve, I, I just focus on the target. Uh, more of an instinctive shooter where you you focus on the target and you go through that. You kind of develop your body muscles to do it. Uh, do you want to do um, you know, Olympic style archery, you know, that's a little bit different. The equipment's a little bit different for that. Uh, those, uh, a lot of recurves, but they're, they're a little bit different. They use sights, uh, on a lot of their Olympic events, they're close range and long range. There's all kinds of different stuff there. Uh, you know, do you want to not have the, uh, they don't take a lot of practice, but I do think the recurves and longbows do take a little more practice because you, you're shooting those without sights. Uh, so now you have to develop your eye-hand coordination and figure out what you want to do with that. Uh, compounds still take a lot of practice to get really good at it, but you, you just, um, you know, once you get the, the hang of it, you can be decent with it without too much work. Uh, of course, if you want to take it to the next level and really be good with it, it does take a lot of practice. And the appropriate type uh, instruction coaching is always good when you're having uh, when you're trying to take your archery skills to the next level. So that's one of the things you need to decide. Uh, and that's how your why will go into. Why do you want to do it? And what interests you? And that'll help you pick out your bow. Uh, and then as far as picking out the bow, what you want to look at is there's there's several things you want to look at. And, and what a lot of people don't realize is uh, eye dominance makes a lot of difference. Uh, when, you, when you take and... Um, shoot a bow with the, the non-dominant eye, there's a lot of things that go wrong. And a lot of people think that uh, if you're right-handed, you're right-eye dominant. If you're left-handed, you're left-eye dominant. And that's not always true. I've, I've seen that many times. Uh, one place I was working, I had a set of twins come in. One was right-handed, the one was left-handed. The right-handed was left-eye dominant, and the left-handed was right-eye dominant. So you, you can never really, really tell. You need to check that dominance. And one of the ways that, you know, we can get into, there's a lot of things on checking eye dominance. That's something that you might want to know when you're going in to get your first uh, first bow is what is your dominant eye? And one easy way to do it is to extend both your arms out and make like an L with one hand and an L with the other hand. And, and then you hold them out and you make a little little bitty circle in, in between there. You can, you can see uh, uh, through there, you take a target uh, off at a distance. And with both eyes open, you bring it up right in the middle uh, of your face, bring it up, and then close your left eye. If you can see what you're looking at, your right eye dominant. If you close your right eye, and you can see it, your left eye dominant. And what you can see is you close the opposite eye. One, you can see it. The other one, you don't. 
if you were using the wrong eye, that's how far you'd be off at that range. So you can easily see that at 20 yards, you can easily be off by several feet uh, on missing your target if you're using the wrong, wrong eye dominance. And I had a friend of mine that was right-handed, and before I got involved in this, uh, um, he went out and got a right-handed bow and was shooting it. And I noticed one time that he was kind of cocking his head over, trying to use his left eye to see through it. And he wasn't hitting anything at all. It was just really off. Um, you know, he couldn't really group anything. Uh, so we checked, and sure enough, he was left eye dominant, put him a left hand bow, and you'd be amazed at how tight them groups got just almost immediately just by using the correct uh, dominant eye. And that goes to a lot of eye dominance and a lot of eye hand coordinations, um, even as much as playing pool. You know, if you're right eye dominant, you're trying to shoot left handed, you're not going to line up down the down the cue to the. Um, hit the the cue ball into the whatever ball or what you're going to do and so that's an important part there and if you don't know what that is uh, or you're not comfortable checking if it is make sure wherever you go uh, that you go into them and they ask you that if they don't ask you that they really don't know what they're doing or they they just don't care enough to make sure you're getting the right bow uh, so don't be surprised if you go in and somebody checks your eye dominance and it's opposite what you write with uh, that's not an unusual thing. So you want to make sure that that's important uh, part. That's the first step you want to do is, is your eye dominance. Uh, then the other thing you got to look at too is your draw length. Uh, most people that just kind of go pick out a bow someplace and go, their draw length's too long. Uh, one good sign of your draw length's too long is if, you, if your string is smacking your arm, your draw length's too long. Uh, that's almost 100% the cause of uh, smacking your arm unless you're taking and, and twisting your arm and cocking your wrist or something, uh, you know, and that's going to force it to hit. But if you're holding it right, then uh, you're not going to uh, be smacking your arm. And now the recurve shooters, it's that, you know, sometimes they'll wear an arm guard because they'll get a slap up towards the, the wrist. If you're getting up more towards your elbow, you know, in the meaty part of your arm, uh, that's a sign that your draw length's too long because your arm's stretched out and it puts that muscle in the way. And uh, you get that hit once or twice, and and you'll you'll not want to shoot uh, or you'll learn to um, shoot it correctly. Uh, so that's the other thing you want to do is make sure you get the right draw length. And and one way to get the right draw length this is uh, this is something that you can do at home before you go uh, is just take have have somebody with you. Hold your arms out to the side and put your palms forward and have somebody measure from the tip of your middle finger to the tip of your middle finger and then take that number and divide by two and a half. And that's going to give you your initial draw length. And I know when I started, I thought it was a 32 inch draw length. And I shot that way for a long time. And I actually went to a class to learn how to shoot. And they said, oh, you're supposed to be 29 and a half. And so... Before the class was like a three-day training, and it was it's fairly expensive. So you're going to do what they say, just because it don't do any good if you don't abide by you know what the coaches say. It's like you're you're shooting two and a half inches too long a draw length, and that might account to why I was smacked my clothes and and had all kinds of other problems and wasn't consistent. And so I was 29 and a half. So I got my bow changed down to 20 and a half for the second class. And I'm shooting, and it's like, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. And, and eventually, you know, shooting enough, just staying with it, it's like, oh, I like this. Now I shoot 29, <laughs> you know, a little shorter. And nice thing about the shooting the 29, just that half inch shorter, is if I, in wintertime, I'm wearing a big heavy coat, I still don't hit the coat. Uh, where before, with longer ones, you'd hit your coat and throw your arrow off. You know, I've had arrows thrown off by several feet at, you know, 10 yards. Uh, I had... I've had arrows go off, you know, by three or four feet just by smacking your arm because you don't know where it gets. Or sometimes it goes low, high, and all over the place. You just don't know where where they're going to go. So that's why drawing is important. Uh, if you don't have anybody that helps you with it, when you get to the store, they should be able to uh, measure your draw length. And you should have a, a little bend in your arm when you're at, at full draw. Uh, so that's one of the things that you want to make sure that uh, gets checked. And, and that's two of the important parts that they're, they're going to check. If they're not checking those for you when you're setting it up, I would probably either go to somebody else there or go to um, a different place. Uh, 
lots of times when you go to you know like your big box stores sometimes you'll have people that know what they're doing and they can help you out but if you go to like some of the chain stores you, you may luck out have somebody you may have somebody that just works there because it's a job uh, they don't know what they're doing they're just selling equipment uh, other places will try and sell you whatever they make the most profit on uh, so you want to make sure that your draw length is correct because uh, that'll that'll definitely help uh, in setting up uh, your bow for you uh, the third item you want to look for is your draw weight uh, uh, you, you've probably seen here. You may have just check on uh, uh, some videos I've seen where uh, these guys try and pick up this bow and it's way, way too strong for them. And they finally get it back and then the arm holding the bow gives away and the bow comes back and smacks them in the face. Um, the, you know, they get that idea they can draw more than what they can shoot. And, and I've seen, you know, small guys shooting, you know, 70 pounds and a great big football player can't even pull it back because you're using different muscles. So, the draw weight's important. You can always build them up. So you want to be able to comfortably draw it back without struggling. Uh, a lot of your bows nowadays have a fairly large amount of a draw length and draw weight adjust adjustment. So always start out. You can always uh, get a little bit heavier ones if you need to. But if you start out too heavy to start with, uh, you're, you're just going to struggle and struggle and struggle. Uh, I know my first bow was uh, um, 52 pounds and... Uh, I took it out hunting, and I was able to uh, um, take a full-length arrow, a heavy arrow, and uh, was able to get my first deer. I was uh, about 20 feet up in the tree and 40 yards away, and that arrow just about clean went through it. And that's at 52 pounds. Um, now, now I shoot 70, but I haven't shot for a while, so I'm gonna have to crank it down just so that I can uh, um, get back into shape. Uh, but I can go down 10 pounds on my bow. Some bows you have a little bit more than that, some not. So you want to look at that. And make sure that if you can't comfortably pull it back, it's too much draw weight. You're not going to enjoy shooting, and that's the whole reason. Is you know you're going to enjoy shooting, and you want to make sure that you have the the right uh, draw weight so that you can have fun. Because if you're struggling, you're going to be sore, and then you're not going to want to pick it up the next day. Uh, you know the key is you need to do lots and lots of shooting. And that's the, the thing that you want to look at. Now, speaking of draw weight, though, uh, you have compounds and recurves and longbows. They develop their weight a little bit differently. Your compounds, the advantage of those is as you draw back, it gets harder and harder and starts letting off. They call it let off. Some are 70% uh, let off. Some are 6% let off. Some even have 80% let off. So you're holding only 80% of the total draw weight. And that does give it a little more uh, advantages in holding. You should draw it back and hold it. Because compounds should normally draw back, and you may hold it for a while while you're aiming and, you know, make sure everything is all going through a shot process. Uh, if you're out, uh, um, say, you want to do hunting, uh, you know, which isn't required for, for archery. A lot of people just shoot paper targets, and, and that's what they like to do. Um, I like to shoot the 3D targets because, you know, I, I, I use that for... For, for hunting and I use the target shooting just to develop my skills. But uh, your recurves and longbows, they develop a little different. As you further you pull it back, the harder it gets. Uh, most of the bows are, are rated at 28 inch draw length and that's what the bow is rated at. So for every inch you pull back further that or less than that, you're adding about three pounds. So like a 40 pound bow, uh, for me at 28 would be 40 pounds but I'm pulling it back another inch, so I actually have a 43-pound bow. And you're going to draw back to those. You're not going to hold a long time because you're holding that whole weight. Uh, and so you're going to draw back, get your anchor point, and complete your, your shot process. And, and that's another whole uh, segment on just, just how to shoot uh, uh, each of the different bows, your recurves, your long bows, and compounds. Uh, crossbows is a little bit different story on that one. But we'll get into that in a later one. Uh, now, I kind of mentioned a little bit on that is, is where to go buy it. You know, that's your big thing. So you, 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 can, you can go on the Internet and buy a, a bow. Uh, they're gonna, they may say that that's only been shot a few times. Uh, I actually looked at one that was listed. I don't remember if it was in a Craigslist or, or wherever it was. And I looked at it, you know, being, you know, an, an archery tech, I, I can spot things that uh, others don't. And as, in the ad said, it was only been shot a few times. The string was worn out. 
So that's, uh, you know, it needs a new string. And that can easily be uh, one of those that uh, uh, you have, uh, you could have and $150 just in strings and cables uh, on, a, on a bow that you just got. You thought you saved all this money. And yet you didn't really save any money because now you're spending more money just to get it going. And, and that's something you want to look at. Uh, one thing you look at when you're looking at a used bow is um, if it's a black string, it should look black and shiny. If it's white and fuzzy, the string is worn out and it has to get replaced. Because what's going to happen is that if that string breaks on you, um, on a recurve compound bow or whatever, if the string breaks, uh, you can have uh, big catastrophic failures where you, your limbs break and everything else. Uh, you can bend axles. Uh, just by dry firing them. And that's the, the thing here is uh, just a little safety thing here is uh, you never, remember, never draw back a bow and release it unless you have an arrow in it. Uh, so I've seen guys put a release aid on there and draw them back. It's like, well, I'm not going to pull the trigger. Yeah, well, yeah, it's easy to touch that trigger and it goes off. And the next thing you know, you have a, a, a bow that's in pieces. Uh, some bows will take it. Most of them won't. Uh, there are some that are designed to be able to do that, but you're looking at, uh, last time I seen one of those, I believe it was Hoyt made one, uh, but they were pushing $2,000 for the bow. Uh, that's not a beginner bow. <laughs> you, you don't want to be going in high-end bows. Uh, you know, we'll get into some of that a little bit later, but uh, you can buy on the internet. Sometimes you can get really good prices, but if it's not draw length and the weight that you can shoot, and if you don't know what your draw length is and don't know anything about them or even know how to change it, because some are easy to change. Some you have modules you have to take out and change some of the older ones. So new ones, you just take a couple screws out and move a module. But if you don't know what you're doing, uh, you can actually cause uh, problems at, down the line. So, you know, that's one there. Craigslist, uh, those, those you can actually go look at them. And if it fits you, uh, then, you know, that could be a good way to do it. But uh, you don't know what's going on with it. The person selling it may not know anything about it. it. may not be their bow. They might be selling it for somebody else. Or if you're lucky, you can get somebody that knows what they're doing and they just got just got a new one. Because, you know, some of the archers, you know, will we'll get new bows every couple of years. Um, I don't because I like keeping the same ones. The bow I hunt with, I got in uh, like 2001. And I still hunt with that one. I've got some other ones newer than that, but uh, not much newer. Like uh, I think my newest one is probably 2003, um, something like that. But they'll last, they'll last you for a long time. So it's a lifetime investment. Uh, I had some of the other ones that I've gotten and, and upgraded. Uh, they're, they're just there. So... Uh, then uh, the the next option is to go to like your big box stores, you know, like Cabela's, Bass Pro, uh, Shields, Dix. Uh, there's probably a whole bunch of other ones. Um, I know there's Gander Mountain. There's there's probably a whole bunch of them. These are they've been changed. They're not really a pro shop. They may have a pro shop part in it. They may or may not have somebody knows what they're doing. Uh, and and that's what I alluded to a little bit earlier. Uh, you want to make sure that whoever you're going to knows what they're doing and can teach you how to how to shoot it uh, i know when i had my store a uh, part of purchasing the bow even if it's the low end 150 200 dollars brand new bow uh you got shooting instructions i taught you how to shoot because my my thought was if i teach you how to shoot you're gonna have more fun and you're gonna get came back and buy more arrows maybe upgrade your sight maybe upgrade your release a little bit better um, and then at some point you're going to upgrade to the higher quality bows there's some features in the the higher end bows that you're going to get that you won't have in the lower end bows uh, but i always start off like new archers i always recommend them buying the lower end bow don't go spend all the money uh, if you decide you don't like the sport do you want a $300 bow sitting in the closet or a $1,000 bow sitting in the closet? You know, that, that's one of those. Yeah, what do you want? If you don't like the sport, you're not getting much out of the bows. You know, you can pretty much figure that by the time you outfit and everything, you might get three-fourths of what you paid for it. Uh, if you've out, what you paid for the bow and that, you know, when you have a case, uh, you have arrows, you might have releases, all kinds of other stuff. You decide you don't like it. Uh, you're not going to get your money back out of it. Uh, so you just start off with the low rainbows, get uh, uh, 
um, get in there. If you like the sport, it's something you really want to do, then stay with it. Um, and then eventually you'll upgrade to know it. And as far as the best place I think you can to recommend going without knowing exactly uh, who's in them is go to the pro shop. You know, it's that that's all they do is sell archery equipment. They don't sell anything else. They, they're they just, their main focus is archery. Uh, they might have other things in there. They might sell, you know, pet food because, you know, a lot of archers are also hunters and yeah, they might have other things, but their main thing, they're, you can tell it in, a lot of times in a name, it's whatever archery shop or, or something like that. So go to the pro shops. They're going to know how to set up the bow correctly because that's part of the deal is, is getting them set up. Uh, if you buy it off of the internet or buy the parts, put it on yourself, do you know how to set it up to get the bow shooting optimally? And the pro shops will know how to do that. Uh, now, fortunately, when I was working at a couple of the stores, like uh, I worked at Bass Pro and Cabela's both, and uh, we had a really good crew at both those stores in, in my area. Uh, we had between uh, the four of us when I was at Bass Pro, we probably had uh, probably close to 100 years, 75 to 100 years worth of experience. Uh, setting up all kinds of bows. Uh, we knew how to set them up. Um, and then I moved on to Cabela's and one of the guys that was bastard, he moved on with me. And and so, you know, in this area here, we happen, you know, in eastern part of Nebraska, western part of Iowa is where he was at. Um, we had people in here that knew what was going up, how to set up bows and how to teach how to people how to shoot. And, you know, that was kind of the, not the norm. I've seen other places, sometimes you go and talk to them. And, you know, I, when I, Go around different places i go in and i'll, I'll yeah, i like to tuck archery <laughs> you know so i'll go in and talk to them and sometimes i'll find some guys like they don't have a clue i know when i first started at cabela's the guy that was in charge of the archery department didn't even i was teaching him the day first day there i was teaching him stuff because he didn't know he was just he was just put in that position they had nobody that knew what was going on uh, but by the time i left we had uh, one of the guys that come over from uh, the other uh, archery store uh, we knew knew what's going on and he was running a department and I'd, I'd moved on to other, other things. And um, so we had some good knowledge there, but that's kind of out of the normal of what you're normally going to see um, from your box stores. That's why your pro shops are, are, are generally your best bet if you don't know what you're doing. Um, once you get going, and you know what you're doing and you want to upgrade your site and you know how to install it and, and set the pins, which you should learn how to do anyway. Uh, buy your new site, upgrade your site, Put it on your bow yourself. You don't need to go in a pro shop to do anything like that. Uh, setting up a rest, now that might be a little different story because there's a lot to setting up a rest and setting up correctly to get your optimum shooting. And that's kind of the main things I wanted to go over in, in this uh, uh, here is is what uh, what you need to look at going and getting your first bow. You know, that's where if you don't do that right, you can have, problems you know down the line you're not gonna have a bow that don't fit you uh and after all it's like why are you wanting to shoot shoot archery well me i think it's like fun you know going out and shooting and and uh, it helps you relax you know because uh, uh, one thing with shooting archery if you're not relaxed you're going to struggle with it and in later um we'll we'll go over some of that in some of the other ones uh, i don't want to make these too long uh we're pushing about uh, 25 minutes now, and I want to keep uh, uh, this down to around 30 minutes, just an introduction to it. And I'm going to be putting together a little buyer's guide, and I'll I'll uh, I'll link into how you can get that. Uh, I have a Facebook group I started, Archery Talk, and I'll put uh, a link uh, to getting into that into the description, so you can go in and join that. And you know, it's not, it's not real. It's it, it's not it's a private group. Uh, it's going to be just a couple of quick, simple questions. Um, are you new to archery? Yes or no. Doesn't matter how you answer. And then an email address so I can send you a copy of the PDF, the little buyer's guide. It'll kind of go over what I went over here and, and you maybe can you fill out uh, some of these things. It's like, oh yeah, I know what my eye dominance is. I'm, I'm right eye dominant or left eye dominant. I know what my draw length should be in that range. Um, now on that draw length, that, that number that I give you where you take your wingspan divided by two and a half that's a starting point um, i have found that most people aren't longer than that i've found several that are you know, normally be less than that 
and depends on where you're at and you know sometimes you know arm lengths are all different you know some some people have real long arms and some have real short arms and uh compared to everybody else everybody's body is different so everyone's a little bit different and it all just depends uh that's just um where uh you need to know so i'll put a link into the uh, to, to join the group and you'll, you'll get a copy of the, the buyer's guide you can fill that out and uh, know what you're going to do and then you can always keep that down it's okay what boat did i buy and what trade was how what was it set for uh, you can even put a log into it's like okay what arrows they use and that's the other thing it's like you get the proper arrows they need to be spine to what you're shooting you know the and and they'll have a chart on that um that's where you, you don't want to buy the arrows just you know go to walmart and buy your arrows because uh, they're just all standard length uh, they might be 30 inches and you know say you've got a a, a 28 inch draw length now you've got three inches uh, too long you know you got it you know you'd be 28 inch or 27 inch draw length and you got 30 inch arrows you know or 29 or or whatever so you want to get them and make sure they're right spine because what will happen is if you don't have the right spined arrow uh they can snap if they're too light of a spine and if you've ever get a chance to watch a slow motion video of an arrow going off uh, it kind of looks like a snake uh, when they take off uh, and then they stabilize and they're all designed that way that's that's normal for them and then you need to look at there's there's a whole little section just in uh, picking the right arrows and how to make sure you have the right ones of that so uh, just uh, uh, look in the description I'll have uh, a link into the uh, Facebook group and that's the Facebook group uh, Archery Talk is the name of it uh, if you can always do a search for it and join that group and I'm just gonna have a couple simple questions uh, are you new to Archer or not just so I know if you're new uh, if you're not new um, just give me some idea and then uh, you know good email to send you that that buyer's guide yeah, so thanks for listening to me and uh, watch for the next one to come out and well, we'll talk on uh, a little bit later. You can always make comments uh, if there's some specific uh, topic you'd like me to talk about. Just let me know and I'll put it in there. I've got some guests coming up in some of the later uh, uh, talks here. Um, I've got, uh, right now I've got three different people that have had a lot of different experiences in, in there and we'll get them on, on one of these uh, uh, archery talks and get their their views and so leave a comment if there's anything you want me to cover thanks for uh listening to to me on archery talk uh, my name is roy canterbury and i'm the host today for archery talk